All right, so tonight we're going to do lesson 15. If you, weren't, uh, if you weren't here for the last 14 lessons, it's okay. There's 25 lessons in Celebrate Recovery, and we just work through them, all 25 each year. As we said earlier, we alternate. One week we have a lesson, one week we have a testimony. So even though we're on lesson 15 tonight, and you maybe weren't here for the first 14, it's okay. We'll talk about things tonight that you'll be able to to take into your own story, into your own recovery. So we're just going to start right off here with principle five, which says voluntarily submit to every change God wants to make in my life and humbly ask him to remove my character defects. And the biblical comparison for that is found in Matthew 5, 6, and it says, happy are those whose greatest desire is to do what God requires. And then step six says we were entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character. And in James 4.10 it says, humble yourselves before the Lord and he'll lift you up. We'll talk about that a little bit more. And then in step seven it says we humbly ask him to remove all of our shortcomings. And in 1 John 1.9 it says if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. So tonight the acrostic is victory, and we're going to learn through the power of Jesus how we can have victory over our character defects, right? Because recovery is not about behavior modification. We've been talking about that a lot. It's not about stopping one thing. It's about finding out what's under those things. What are the character defects that are driving me to make unhealthy choices in my life. And that's what we're going to take a look at tonight. So your first fill-in tonight for victory is the V, which is voluntarily submit to every change God wants to make in my life. Because the thing is, God is a gentleman, and he's not going to force anything on you. We have to volunteer to submit to him and to every change he wants to make. In Romans 12.1, it describes it this way. It says, Offer yourselves as a living sacrifice to God, dedicated to his service and pleasing to him. I want to just stop there for a second and make sure we don't miss that. Pleasing to him, right? We have this amazing opportunity that we get to please God. Isn't that incredible? God, the creator of the entire universe, we have the opportunity to please him. Let God transform you inwardly by a complete change of your mind. So you might remember back when we were in principle three, we made the most important decision of our lives. And that was we turned our lives and our will over to the care of God. And that decision got us right with God. And then we, as we continued to grow in our acceptance of Jesus, we turned our will over each day. And then... We're at this part in our recovery where we start to work on us. We, in in principle four, we made a fear, a, a searching and fearless moral inventory of ourselves. And when we did that, some of us didn't do that. (laughs) And we didn't do that because of this reason right here. The first step in any victory is to recognize who the enemy is. Who are we battling? And, and I, I remember in my first step study, I didn't want to do the inventory. And I'll just tell you why I didn't want to do the inventory. I didn't want to do the inventory because I knew it was going to show this, that I was my greatest enemy. I didn't want to face the things that I'd done. I didn't want to face the choices I'd made. I didn't want to take ownership and accountability and responsibility for where my life was, right? I'd I'd perfected the art of blaming God and blaming you and uh, blaming everyone. I certainly didn't want to have to do the inventory and take responsibility for myself. But then, right, as we as we grow in recovery and we start to take off the muddy glasses of denial, we get into the step six and we decide that we're entirely ready to start identifying these character defects, that we don't want to live this way anymore. And that takes us to the I in victory, which stands for identify which character defects you're going to work on first. Because Ident- if you're anything like me, when you make the list, it's, I, think, I think the first, and uh, you know, this is embarrassing, but the first list I made, I think, was six pages. I was a mess, right? 
30 years of, of being out in the world and doing meth, I was a mess. And when I looked at that list, I became overwhelmed. And I was like, God, how can I do this? It's too much. I can't do all of this. Well, you don't have to do it all at once, right? We just want to identify what they are, and then we want to pick just one or two things to work on. I want you to remember that in this process, falling down doesn't make you a failure. Staying down does. Right? We get to choose to get up each time that we make a mistake. So we want to ask God to remove the character defects first that are causing us the most pain. That's how you prioritize which ones you're going to work on. What is the thing that's causing me the most pain? So when I, when I identified the character defects in my life, the ones that were causing me the most pain, there was two. One was I was just sure that God hated me and that my life was terrible because God was mean and judgmental, right? I was just sure of that. And then the other one was, I was pretty sure that I was unlovable and that because of that, I would never be able to have community. And so those were the things that I had to work on right away, right? And had to develop a plan, which we'll talk about more here in a minute. In Proverbs 16, 9, it says, in their hearts... Humans plan their course, but the Lord establishes their steps. The Lord establishes their steps. We're going to do the identifying of the character defects, but God is going to be the one who does the work. Right? God's going to be the one that does the work. In 2 Corinthians 5.17, oh, wait, I got ahead of myself. Uh, the C in victory stands for change your mind. Change your mind. Because in 2 Corinthians 5.17 it says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has what? Has come. The old has gone. The new is here. The old nature is gone. And the changes that are going to take place are a team effort, right? Our job is to identify them and then to follow whatever direction God gives us, right? So, uh, so, for example, right, if we read in his word that we should do particular things, we should do those things. And if we read in his word that we should avoid certain things, we should avoid those things, right? It, we get to partner with him and the things that he does. In Romans 12, 2, it says it this way, do not conform to the pattern of this world. Do not conform to the pattern of this world. So if something that you're doing or thinking or is a habit in your life and it appears to be a pattern that happens in this world, then you should turn away from that thing. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Yep. So to transform something means what? It means to do these things. It means to, one, change its condition. Two, change its nature. Three, change its function. And four, change its identity. So when we talk about being transformed, these are the four things that we're looking to have happen in our lives. I know that for me, right, I love that when we come to CR, we identify as being believers in Jesus. That's my identity now. I'm not Jonathan the felon. I'm not Jonathan the drug addict. I'm not Jonathan the alcoholic. I'm Jonathan, the believer and follower of Jesus Christ. That's my identity. And I can assure you that my function in recovery is different than my function was in the world, right? In the world, my function was committing crimes to get substances and do them. That was my function. That was all I did. But in recovery, I get to be of service, right? I get, to, I get to do all kinds of things with all of you. And so my entire function has changed. And then the way that I think and the way that I feel, my nature is different. Everything about me is different now because God is transforming my life. And all of you that are here tonight, you've had that experience on some level yourselves or you wouldn't keep coming back. God is in the transformation business, and he's transforming all of us a little at a time. The T in victory stands for turn over 
your character defects. Turn over your character defects. Anybody ever tried to rely on their own willpower? It doesn't work so good in recovery, right? I've done that. Relying on our willpower kept us stuck. It blocked our recovery. Our past efforts to change, our hurts, hangups, and habits were unsuccessful. But in James 4.10, we're given the key that unlocks the door, and it's this. Humble yourselves before the Lord, and He will lift you up. Man, that, that idea of humbling myself, that's a hard, right? I, it's gotten easier in the nine years I've been in recovery, but it's still hard because I want to do things my way. And if you don't believe that, tell me to do something. And I'll tell you why I can't. Because I want to do it my way. Humility is not a bad word. And being humble does not mean that you're weak. Doesn't mean that you're weak. Humility is kind of like underwear. You should have it, but nobody should see it. You should, you should write that down, if, just in case. Humility is... The, the real definition of humility is to make the right estimate of yourself and see ourselves as God sees us. Make the right estimate of ourselves and see ourselves the way God sees us. We can't proceed in our recovery until we're willing to turn our defects of character over to Jesus. Last week we talked about letting go and letting God, and that's what that's talking about right there. The O in victory stands for one day at a time, right? We didn't get in this mess overnight. Our character defects weren't developed. We weren't like born and were a mess, right? We became a mess over time. And uh, there are, are change isn't going to happen instantly. Most of us like instant gratification, but it's actually not a thing. It doesn't actually work that way. Recovery happens one day at a time. And so we want to just stay focused on today and then put a whole bunch of 24-hour periods right back to back to back. And then over time, God will be able to transform and change our lives. You've probably heard the old cliche, life by the yard is hard. Life by the inch is a cinch. I don't know if I agree with that, but it's in the book, so I'm saying it. <laughs> I mean, I, life can just be hard, right? Even by the inch some days, right? Life can be hard, but it's definitely easier together. That I'm sure of. In Matthew 6, 34, it says this, So don't be anxious about tomorrow. God will take care of your tomorrow too. Live one day at a time. I remember I was reading a book not too long ago, uh, earlier this year, and it said, Don't be afraid about tomorrow because God's already there. I like the idea of that. Okay, let's look at the R in victory. The R stands for recovery is a process. We're just kind of sticking to this idea of one day at a time, after one day at a time, after one day at a time. Once we ask God to remove our character defects, we begin a journey that will lead us to freedom from the past. I want to be free of the past, don't you? I mean, I definitely want to be free of that. So here's kind of what it looks like. Number one, I just want to encourage you, right? You're going to take it easy. It's a process. Don't look for perfection. Don't look for that. You're not going to be able to find it, and you're going to, you're going to defeat yourself in the process. Rejoice and celebrate in steady progress. Right? Because every 24 is progress. Right? Every minute is progress. Rejoice and celebrate in steady progress. Recovery is serious business. We know that, right? But we also have to celebrate. That's why Nicole and I kind of joke around a little bit, right? Because it's important to be able to have fun in recovery. It's not just important, but it is okay. Remember uh, that there's going to be patient improvement. Patient improvement. So in Philippians 1 6, it says it this way, those three ideas. Uh, and this is the Apostle Paul talking to the, the church in Philippi and to us today, right? They, they were worried, right, that they weren't good enough. They were trying so hard to be good and they felt like they were failures. And Paul said this to them He's all, hey, and I'm sure that God 
who began a good work within you will keep right on helping you grow in his grace until his task within you is finally finished. When? On the day when Jesus Christ returns. Right? On that day. And I love that it says, God began the good work in you. God began the good work in me. Right? It's just, it's a partnership, but he's doing all the heavy work. In, in Prince, in, in, um, in step six, where it says, we were entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character. Sometimes we like to rewrite that and say, we were entirely ready to have me remove all these defects of character. But it's actually not going to work that way. God is the one that we have to uh, let do the work. And then the last letter in victory tonight is the Y, which stands for you must choose to change. You must choose to change because as long as I place self-reliance first, a true reliance on Jesus Christ is impossible. If I can handle it, if I can get it all done, then I'm not going to allow Jesus into my heart and into my mind and actually be transformed. In James 4, 6, it says this, God gives strength to the humble, so give yourselves humbly to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. And when you draw close to God, God will draw close to you. Right? Have you ever been in a relationship with someone where when you were away from them, you longed to be with them? Right? And, And as you spent time together, it was harder and harder to be apart? Well, that's what God wants with you. Right? God longs for you to spend time with Him. And and He desires that we long to spend time with Him. Right? That we can bask in His beauty and in His love. So here's the question tonight, right? In principle 5, step 6, and step 7. Right? There was that one word in there. I'm entirely ready, right, to let God remove all my defects of character. And so that's the question I want to ask you tonight. Are you entirely ready to let God remove all your defects of character? Here's the thing, right? We're not the how and when committee. (laughs) We're just the preparation committee. And all we have to do is get ready and trust that God is going to do his work. So tonight, Jesus is asking you, do you want to be healed? And do you want to change? That's what principle five is all about. All right, would you bow your heads with me in prayer? Dear God, please, I ask that you would show me your will in working on my shortcomings. Help me not to resist the changes that you have planned for me, Lord. I need you to direct my steps. Help me stay in today not get dragged back into the past or lost, worrying about the future. I'm guilty of both those things, Lord. I I just ask that you give me the power and the wisdom to make the very best I can out of today. And I pray that for everyone here tonight, Lord. pray that in Jesus' name. Amen.